you know this? Have you ever, ever seen this one? Of course, animal. It looks like a plant, right? Is it a plant? No, no. It's, it's an animal. But have you ever, ever seen this? Well, you know what? This actually reminds me of a movie called Finding Nemo. How many of you have seen this? Se seen this movie, Finding Nemo? It's a beautiful movie. Very nice movie. Okay, if you haven't, then I can give you a small example or people among you like who are unable to recall even after seeing that movie. Do you recall this one? Finding Nemo? Well, so this is the clown fish that I'm showing you and this is, that one is sea anemone. Fine. So it's a clown, uh, it's a very small, so in this movie basically Finding Nemo, Nemo is basically a small clown fish, as you can see here, who happily lived in the sea anemone. But you know what? Not all fishes are lucky enough to live, to stay protected inside within this why why so why so that the clownfish can stay happily here but not other fishes we're going to talk about it yes you know what the sea anemone that i'm talking about they have special cells called the nidoblast nidoblasts and see what happens here just follow it Follow it. I'm going to explain what happens. See what happens. The fish comes here and then something is stinging and then, oh, basically, you know, these, these structures that you're seeing, these are the tentacles. Fine. They have specialized cells, as I told you, called the nidoblasts and these have some, these have some stinging structures. So nidoblasts basically are specialized cells which are capable of stinging this these fishes and they release some neurotoxins they can paralyze the fishes other than this clownfish other fishes other fishes okay if they try to come inside or feed on the sea anemone then yes it's very bad for them they get paralyzed because of this Fine. So these basically are organisms which are the cylindrator. Fine. They're also known as phylum nidaria because of presence of nidoblasts, the specialized stinging structures, stinging cells. These are the cells. Fine. Great. So you see, it's just not sea anemone which belongs to this phylum nidaria, but you see brain coral. See? It actually looks like a brain. Sea fan. Wonderful. It's, it's beautiful. See this. Sea pen. See? It looks beautiful, right? Okay. So all these belong, all these animals, you know, these are animals. They belong to the phylum Nidaria. Great. It's not over yet. There are more. Jellyfish. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure you have heard about jellyfish. See how beautiful they are. Beautiful creatures. Portuguese man of war, see that? I'm going to talk about it during the session. And Hydra, of course you have heard about Hydra. Fine? So all of these belong to, all of these organisms belong to the phylum. That's Nidaria. Great. So let us talk about the characteristic features of this phylum. Okay? They are aquatic and mostly, mostly they are marine. They are aquatic extensively. Mostly they are found in the marine environments. Now, these are the organisms which are not found in the lakes, rivers or ponds, not freshwater, but in marine conditions. In fact, you'll find them in the ocean floors, deep ocean floors. Fine? So, all these organisms belong to phylum nidaria. You see, brain coral, its scientific name is meandrina. And sea anemone, Adamsia. Fine. Meand Meandrina and Adamsia. Great. These are the scientific names. Remember it because questions are asked in your neat examination. Fine. Let us talk about a bit more. You see, jellyfish, hydra. 
these are also marine fine now they can be sessile that means they do not show movement some of them do not show movement and some of them can be free swimming for example you see here brain coral they are sessile they do not show movement while if i talk about jellyfish they swim they are free swimming organisms belonging to the same phylum that is phylum nidaria great now can you tell me if i talk about let's take hydra as an example what would be the symmetry we have talked about the basis of symmetry basis of classification symmetry being one of them so what would be the symmetry come on quickly answer me if i talk about hydra what would be the symmetry can you answer this yes now can you answer hydra they would be radially symmetrical fine so body their body can be divided into two identical halves if you cut in any plane that is that is passing through the center of center of the body of this organism you see if you just take hydra and this portion this is basically the center and if you take any plane then if you cut you'll get two equal halves so they are radially symmetrical fine characteristic feature of the phylum nidaria if i talk about hydra great now now talking a bit more they exhibit the tissue level of organization tissues are not organized into organs they have tissue level organization quickly let's see okay you don't have to bother about all the structures labeled over there but let's try to just understand that they have the tissue level of organization fine not organs see this is a gastrovascular cavity okay i'm coming to it we'll talk about the coelom yes so you see these they have the tissues but they don't have organs fine yes i was talking about this they exhibit diploblastic organization diploblastic that means how many germ layers they will have two what are they ectoderm endoderm will they have mesoderm no they will they so this layer is known as the mesoglea fine because they do not have differentiated cells so basically they are diploblastic in organization that means they have two germ layers ectoderm endoderm got it very good now let's see diploblastic organization let's see when the various structures that develop fine you see the ectoderm from the ectoderm these are the structures which develop interstitial cells nidocytes i was talking about them nidoblasts these are the specialized cells stinging cells fine now this is the mesoglea as you can see and endoderm you see the food vacuole it's labeled over here fine the nutritive muscular tissue muscular cells come from the endoderm and this is the whole structure of the hydra got it okay if you just try to look into this structure endoderm the innermost mesoglea the center you see the ectoderm is the outermost ecto outer endo inner fine remember it now we have seen this coming back to this story of ours that we started fine we started with this let's talk about the nidoblasts let's talk about it so nidoblast basically in nidaria the tentacles so those structures you have seen those are the tentacles let me show you yes these are the tentacles now we'll take a closer look into the cellular structure of these tentacles what are they made up of let's see yes so you see the cells how they are arranged these are the cellular structures as you can see and if i zoom into each of these structures the nidoblast rather if i show you now these are the important areas fine see you know nidarians they are carnivorous they use their tentacles to capture the prey fine also in addition these nidoblasts these nidoblasts which are specialized cells which contain the hypnotoxin they can paralyze the fishes other than the clownfish yes after paralyzing the tentacles help to grab the food grab the fishes and they digest it okay let us move ahead so 
As I told you, they are armed with specialized cells called the nidoblasts, which contain the hypnotoxin. Now, what are the functions? Of course, defense. They also capture prey and anchorage. The tentacles, okay? Fine? Great. See here what happens. Take a look at this diagram. This, this small animation that is happening. See how the stinging cells work. So, the cells fire off, you know, the needles, as you can see. They're microscopic syringe-like structures and that delivers, you see, it's coming out, right? That delivers the neurotoxin, okay? Basically, it's a poison, it's a venom. Now, this neurotoxin paralyzes the fishes. You know, if I talk about jellyfishes, they, they do the same thing with human beings. If you, that's the reason it's always suggested that you are not supposed to touch jellyfish. For example, when we visit the beaches and all, then if suddenly a jellyfish comes to the uh, seashore, then we are excited enough to go and quickly grab it. But do not ever do that because they release poison. They have stinging cells and they can release the toxins and they can be really harmful. Fine? Great. So the jellyfishes also do the perform the same mechanism as you can see here. Uh, so here I'm showing about the sea anemone. Fine. Okay. Great. Here you can see the trigger lid, human skin and the stinging thread goes inside and releases the neurotoxin. This is the mechanism 